right, everyone, welcome to Arsenal Fan TV. And in this video, I'm going to bring you something a bit more positive, and that is our 2 0 victory over Everton in the Premier League. This is certainly the kind of result we wanted to see following the defeat to Monaco in midweek in the Champions League. A disastrous result for us, that. But let's not talk about that too much. Really, this is a good result for us. It was a comfortable performance, a comfortable victory, and a routine victory at that. And our league form, by the Champions League has been absolutely outstanding. By the Spurs defeat as well. We, we're really racking on the points. I think we've got eight wins in ten Premier League fixtures. And the next two games we've got are against QPR and West Ham United. QPR away from home at Loftus Road is going to be very difficult. Certainly a team that are fighting for survival in the Premier League. And West Ham, we've seen this season that they do show elements of class. Um, despite their loss to Crystal Palace at the weekend. So we've got two difficult fixtures coming up, but at the same time, two winnable fixtures. This was always going to be a difficult game. Martinez and his team came to the Emirates trying to dictate play, dictate possession, and I think that was noticeable in the early stages of the game. They had something like, in the first 10, 15 minutes, they had something like 65% possession. They were certainly outplaying us on that front, but they weren't really doing anything with it. I can't really think of any clear-cut chances that Everton created, although they did look to get us from the get-go in this game. They certainly looked dangerous going forward with Lukaku. He was probably their standout player today. But they did look dangerous every time they attacked and they were trying to expose a defence that maybe was prone to lacking confidence. It certainly did seem that way. The most notable change for Arsenal, which is one that I was so incredibly pleased to see, was Gabriel coming in for Per Mertzacker. On the topic of Gabriel coming in, um, Farrelly deserves his chance in the Arsenal team in a moment. He played really well for me today, bar a couple of errors, which I think we've got to expect of him. He still isn't fluent in English. He's still going to have some adapting problems, but he's come into the squad. He's done an excellent job today. He's kept a clean sheet in a very, very, very difficult game for him. Certainly a difficult game to really make your Premier League debut at home. Um, well, not debut, but full-time debut uh, in a very difficult game against a side that has a very decent attack, bar how poorly Everton have been this season. They have got a good a good attack. They've got Morales, they've got Naismith who came on, they've got Romelu Lukaku. Certainly players that can punish you. And although he did make about two sloppy errors that I can think of, there was one header he made which he put right back into the box. And of course the obvious um, thing he did at the start of the game which nearly allowed Lukaku to come in if it wasn't for the miraculous uh, well, tackle from David Ospina. Apart from that, I can't really think of anything. He made some superb tackles that you certainly wouldn't see Per Mertzaka doing. And he's certainly warranted a... Uh, a, a place in the team at the moment. He's certainly playing better than Per Merch like I was, and once he's got his English sorted out, a real asset, asset to the team. And he's a no-nonsense guy. I just loved having him in the squad today. Certainly deserves his chance, and he's going to provide some real competition for um, for Merch like certainly. Koscielny, alongside him, I thought he did an excellent job commanding uh, the area. Bellerin and Gibbs, I think Bellerin certainly had a more confidence-boosting game. I think Regarding some of the players that I would have suggested had lacked confidence following the defeat against Monaco, I think Wenger did the right thing in maybe continuing with them in the squad. I thought Ozil did well today, got two assists, although he's very subtle in his approach. You can say what you like, that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't run the game, he doesn't dictate play, he looks lazy, his body language is poor. He got two assists today. He was one of the most vital players in the team. Olivier Giroud getting a great goal, though, in all honesty, despite the goal, which was absolute class, he should have had another two goals. Um, he probably should have scored a hat-trick today. I thought Giroud had a lot of chances that he missed. But again, that is to be expected. These, this, this was a guy that was lacking on confidence, and he scored an absolute class goal. His form has been superb for us, for Olivier Giroud, and... For 10 million quid, we for 10, 12 million, whatever we're going to say, he has been superb for Arsenal since he's come in. He's scoring goals practically every other game for us. I mean, recently in the league, practically every game. He's been absolute class, and he's a great asset to the side. He is going to have occasional poor games like the one he did against Monaco, but that can happen to any player whatsoever. We can't judge him on just that one performance because this season he's been superb, although at times he can be incredibly frustrating. That's... That's been proved uh, many a time, not just this season, but last season and the season before that as well. But it's great to see him finally getting his shooting boots on and grabbing some goals for us. But I'll get into the first goal a little bit later. Regarding the rest of the team, um, you know, it was, a, it was a solid one. The only real thing that maybe I would have questioned was Gibbs keeping a place in the team. Gibbs was all right for me today. He didn't really do anything outstanding. His crossing was diabolical at times. And I, I think I would have preferenced Monreal starting this game. He certainly warranted a chance in the team and I think that well not even a chance he he was playing really well before Rick Gibbs even came in against Monaco so I would have certainly played Monreal in this fixture and I think it's a bit harsh that he's really being kept out of the team and Theo Walcott a player that hasn't made it back into the team yet which is a little bit concerning considering that we rotate the squad 
in areas today. We saw Danny Welbeck dropped. We saw Alex Oxlade Chamberlain come into the fold of things, and Theo Walcott still didn't um, still didn't get in the starting lineup and didn't even come off the bench. So that's a little bit concerning. Maybe he'll play against QPR in midweek. It'd be good to see that him and maybe Chamberlain on the uh, on the flanks because Sanchez looks he looks a bit fatigued at the moment, and I think that he he's going to need a rest at some point. But it's a, it's a healthy squad we've got that allows us to rotate in this manner. And Cochrane as well. In the middle of the park, it looks like he's got a broken nose, but he was absolutely miraculous for us today. Absolute class. David Ospina, um, I've already mentioned his save today, but he was pro, you know, close to being man of the match if it wasn't for some excellent work from. I think Laura Koscielny came close to being man of the match today. We had a lot of man of the match performers, I think, although there were a few players that, um, you know, actually saying that I think I think it was a good all-round team performance today. Certainly a very a very solid one, and certainly the kind of response I would like to see. From the uh, from from the game against Monaco in midweek, although that first 20 minutes for me was a little bit shaky. Getting into the game itself, there were times when we were giving the ball away. We couldn't string a couple of passes together, and we kept giving Everton possession. Not by them trying to get it off us, by players like Özil, Sanchez just running in, running into Everton players, and that was very poor to see in that first half. Um, and we didn't really look like scoring. That was the most concerning thing because Everton were defending very well. Every time we went forward, they had about nine, ten men behind the ball, which you could naturally expect them to do. And it was very hard to break them down. And that concerns me. We struggle to break teams down that play in that manner, a bit like Monaco did. And if they get a goal, we go into panic mode, which we can't really afford to do because we just fall to pieces when we go a goal behind. That mentality's got to change. We've got to stop panicking. Um, but thankfully, we didn't concede because Everton didn't really, weren't really able to catch us on the break apart from one chance that they had with Lukaku. If it wasn't for an excellent tackle from uh, Gabriel that I've already mentioned. But... Um, we just we, we got into the game a little bit more. We grew into it. We looked. We started to grow in confidence when we realised that Everton didn't really have too much to punish us with. We did get a goal in the 39th minute, the excellent time to score. Olivier Giroud with a goal that was absolutely incredible. Out of all the chances that he, he missed, it was a bit similar to his one against Middlesbrough. This was probably the hardest one that he could have taken. A great goal by him. That's going to do his confidence the world of good. I mean, it, it's good of Wenger to really keep the faith in him. But um, I, 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 it's, it, it, I'm hoping that this will... This will push on for him. I'm hoping that he he'll stop having games like he did against Monaco, where he just seems to disappear, miss every single opportunity that presents itself to him. He did miss opportunities today, but he scored as well. And hopefully, going into the game against QPR and then the game against United, we've we've got a, an inform Olivier Giroud, who's in form anyway. So I don't really know why I'm saying that. But um, going into that second half, we looked confident when we came out. We looked. Uh, we looked re-established, we looked like we had a point to prove and when we go a goal up we always look like we've always got that threat to cement another one. But it was a fairly quiet second half in truth, not too much of a note to talk about apart from the Coughlin broken nose which, um, well, it just shows his team spirit and, uh, you know, it, not not really like I can think of a note that really occurred. I mean, they did have more chances with Lukaku um, but that's really all that occurred from an Everton point of view. They brought Aaron Lennon, he had a good chance to score, more incredible saves from David Osley. Don't get me wrong, Everton did have their chance in this game, but we were the ones that came out on top, and I think we're the ones that were certainly deserved of the win. And then we got the goal later in the game through Thomas Rosicki's first touch of the game, and a superb goal from him. Granted, it did take a deflection off Phil Jagielka, but excellent character by Rosicki, and a superb goal at that. So, really pleased for him, really pleased for the team today, but um, it still doesn't really take that game against Monaco out of my mind. I still uh, This was the right way to respond, but... I still think that performance against Monaco was absolutely unforgivable. However, I want to look at the positives today. We can do, we can still do really well in the league. Let's not forget that after today, we're nine points behind Chelsea. If West Ham could, you know, scrape a draw against Chelsea in midweek and we could beat QPR, then we will we, we'll be seven points behind. I'm not saying that we're going to win the league. I certainly don't think that's going to happen. But if we could get second, that would be a superb season. If we could get second and we could win the FA Cup. If we could turn things around in Monaco, if we could, you know, at least give it a shot, that would um, that would give us some positivity. But I certainly don't think that this 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 is papering over a lot of cracks that we saw against Monaco in midweek. But the important thing was getting the win, and we've got to rebuild confidence in the side because when we're a team that rely heavily on confidence, I think that's so blatantly obvious within the side. And I think that once we've got that confidence behind our belt. When when we if we we've won this game obviously and we go to the game against QPR where I'd expect us to be getting a convincing win there as well, then we go to United the big game at Old Trafford our biggest game of the season by a distance a massive massive game for us 
Very looking forward to that, but um, this is the exact kind of result we need today after a poor result in midweek. Almost an upwards from here, who knows what we can do this season, but this is certainly the right way to respond. If you enjoyed the video, guys, please do hit that like button, subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV, and make sure to check out my own channel, AFC Game by Game, and I will speak to you soon for my QPR preview. I think, you know, Mertesacker, I think, rest in peace, mate. We don't want to see you no more. Because he that harsh? He, turned, he turned his back on the, on Wednesday night on that, on that ball for the mm. shot that deflected off him. And, mm. if you know, Tony Adams must be watching this geezer and thinking, how's he playing for Arsenal?